I wheeze as I march up the steps, and I'm sure my makeup is suffering, but smeared raccoon eyes will serve to ruin Kansa's image of goddess even more. I have to wipe the sweat from my forehead several times. At least I still smell like a bouquet. I march into the inner temple as if I have an entire army backing me up. For once, the old man is actually here before I am. He stands in the middle of the temple, facing the universal mirror. I go, HA! Then he grows a few feet and turns around. I stop in my tracks when I realize who it really is. From the doorway, I couldn't tell it's a completely different person. He's not even wearing the same color, a dark blue tunic with off-white trim. Jace, I breathe, relieved that it's not the old man, excited that I can finally see him after days of only reading his handwriting. Then I wonder, what are you doing here? Only holy people or whatever are allowed in. Of course, an old crow cuts me off and I don't get to hear Jace's lovely voice. Your serene divinity, it is my duty to teach at least one of the Martyrs of Stars the truth of the cycle. It is my luck that I can choose which of the two I might teach. Jace and I stare at Sage and Kansa. Hold up, I say. Martyrs? Sage and Kansa unfolds his hands and whips his sleeves outward, almost like a shrug, gesturing to the both of us. His Divine Highness and Her Serene Divinity are reincarnated from the Martyrs of Stars, King Sile and Goddess Sei. Surely even you were aware of this, he says, raising an eyebrow at me. Sure, everyone else made it clear that I'm the Creator Reborn, but no one ever mentioned anything about martyrdom. The old man continues, So you see, your divinity, the prince has even more right to stand in this building, considering I had asked you not to come back. He eyes me up and down, and the folds around his mouth deepen as he wrinkles his nose in distaste. I'm about to mirror the expression when Jace interjects. Please, your grace. He says, his voice is like music compared to the old man's warbling. Michelle has all the right to be here as I do, and I would prefer it if she were by my side to listen to your words. Gosh, at least one of us knows how to play our roles well. I don't think I've seen Jace act so princely before. The girl is disrespectful and unfit for her title. That's a matter of opinion, your grace. But the fact is, she is the only goddess either you or I have encountered in this lifetime. And I, for one, think that she's even more magnificent than the legends portray. His words make my heart race and face burn with rising blood. Maybe they'll think it's just my makeup. Jace smiles at me fondly as he continues. Besides, we both discussed that we're afraid of the responsibility of our respective roles as Crown Prince and Goddess. He looks at Seijin Kansa. Knowing what it means to be a martyr will add even more of a burden to my responsibilities. I'm certain that if you were rejecting me and teaching Michelle, she would prefer not to do it alone. After all... He barely lifts one shoulder in a majestic shrug. What can you do to prevent me from repeating this lesson to Michelle tonight? If you teach the both of us, then I won't have to serve as messenger later on. Besides, it'll increase our chances of survival and seeing the cycle to the end if we both know our duties. He looks at Kansa pleasantly, not a hint of scorn, but the old man looks like he wants to rip his own nails off at the prospect of dealing with me again. <coughs> he clears his throat and drops his fumbling hands. Very well. He nods, and he whips around to the temple doors. With his back turned to us, Jay smirks at me and winks. Oh god, could he be any hotter? I mouth to him, thank you. Kansa shuts the temple doors, and suddenly I feel claustrophobic. When he turns around, Jace and I look away from each other, and watch as he crosses the room to the universal mirror. You may sit.